In this tutorial we're going to look at how we can combine the budget data on this sheet with the actual data that we have on this sheet. Now in my case they're on separate worksheets but for you they might be in different workbooks or even different systems. Wherever they are we need to combine them so that we can then do our variance analysis. Normally we'd use multi-column VLOOKUP or index and match formulas to bring these actuals into a column on the budget table. And let's just take a look at how we do that. We'll use index. Now we want to reference table one, which is the table containing my actuals. So we want to look up the actual sales figure and we'll use match to find the row. So we want to match the month and the category and the product with the corresponding columns on the actual table. So the month and table one's category column and table one's product column and we want to match them exactly so we'll put a zero in there close our parentheses on match and close it on index press control shift and enter because this is an array formula and you can see it's brought in the figures let's just give this a name actual sales so it all looks good except this row here we obviously haven't got an actual for beverages in January for the product chamomile because it's returned an NA, it can't find a value there. So the other problem that we could potentially have is we don't know if it's brought in all the actuals. It's only going to bring in actuals where we had a budget. So there could be instances where we don't have a budget and let's just check that. I'll delete the error so we can have a look. So we've got here, let's put a comma separator in. We've got here 1.995 million and in our actual sales table we've got 1.997 million so there's obviously more actuals than we have budget line items for and so the process is to find which actual sales are missing and it's this back and forth thing but instead of using formulas we can use power query so let's take a look i'm going to delete that column and we're going to use power query to do this the first thing we need to do is to load these two tables into Power Query. Now on the Power Query tab you'll see there's lots of different sources we can use to get data. Mine is housed in an Excel table so I'm just going to click on the From table and that opens the Query Editor window. First thing I'm going to do is give it a name just so it's easy to identify so I'll call this Actuals and I'm just going to close and load to. I'm not going to do any more there. It's going to create a connection to this table. Now I'll click load and you can see now I have a connection to my actuals table here. Let's repeat that for the budget. So from table, we'll call this budget and again close and load to and I just want a connection and then load. So now I have my two connections to the actuals and budget and I want to combine those two tables together and to do that on the Power Query tab I'm going to use Append. So we'll select the first table which is the actuals and then the budget. So it's going to append these two tables together and this again opens the query editor where we've got a new query. We'll call this budget and actuals. Now so far we haven't done any more than really copying and pasting the budget figures underneath the actual figures. You can see we've got a column for budget sales and we've got a load of nulls and that's because what we're seeing here are the actual sales figures first and then down below if I were to scroll down far enough we'd see the budget figures. But Power Query only shows me a preview so I can see there's more than 999 rows and it's just showing me a preview. Ideally what I'd like to do is have my budget sales on the same row as my actual sales where there's a line item for it. So I want to find January's beverages English breakfast budget and I can do that in Power Query with the group by tool so I'll just tab to save my name. The first thing I want to do is to select the columns that I want to group by and then click on group by it's on the home tab and it'll automatically populate those three columns in my group by list. I can add more or remove these using the plus and minus buttons here but they're correct that's what I want. And then these are going to be the columns for my actuals. So let's give it a name, actuals. And I want to sum the actual sales column. And then I want one more for my budget. And again, I want to sum the budget sales. 
So this will group my data by these three columns and it will give me two new columns called actuals and budget. So now you can see I only have 859 rows. It's consolidated it down where it can. You can see here for the black tea we don't have a budget but we have an actual and that would have been one of the line items that contributed to the difference that I had when I used index and match. Okay, now we're ready to load it back into Excel. First of all, I just want to format the date and time. I don't need the time, it's all just 12 o'clock, so I'm just going to set it to date. I can also set the format for my number columns, but you can see they're already formatted as decimal number and my category and product are text, so I don't need to do any more. I can close and load and I can either load it into a table or I can create a connection. If I load it into a table I can choose where to put it but I can also add it to the data model and that's Power Pivot. So I'm using Excel 2013 and we have a direct route from Power Query into Power Pivot with this checkbox. I'm going to just put it in a new table on a new worksheet so I'll click load. So there's my new consolidated data. I'm just going to give this sheet a name. This is my query output. And you can see now in my queries, I've got three. I've got my original connections to actuals and budget, and then I've got my consolidated or combined data. If I scroll to the very bottom, you can see I've got budget figures for November and December, but I don't have any actuals. And this is a typical scenario because you're going to get new data every month, maybe even every week and you want to add to that each time you get new data and it's easy with Power Query. So here I've got my actuals for November and December. I'm just going to copy them and then I'm going to go to my actual table and I'm going to paste them at the bottom. You can see my table's grown now. It now goes down to row 859. I can go back to my query and if I right click and refresh, Power Query goes and gets the data, runs it through the cleaning processes that I applied, which was to remove the time from the date, and it's popped it into my query. And I haven't had to do any more. And that's one of the amazing things about Power Query. Once you set up the steps, and I'll show you in the query, once you set up these steps, they can be used again and again, a bit like you might record a macro. And like I said, we don't have to always bring data in from an Excel table. If we look on the Power Query tab, we can get data from all these different sources. If you want to download the workbook for this video, click this link to visit my blog where you'll find the workbook download. Thanks for watching.